to each other. Oh no. Yikes. Okay. Hi, my name is Rachel, and today I'm going to be making empanadas Filipino style. This series is called The Sago Show, where I wanted to explore the roots and dig deeper into the history behind some of my favorite Filipino dishes and sweets. Today, we're doing the most convenient of all snacks, empanadas. To start off here, into three cups of flour, I'm going to combine a half teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and three tablespoons of sugar. Now in general for this, we're going to try to keep the dough as cold as we can. So I'm going to cut in one cup of cold butter that I've cut into cubes and kept in the freezer for a couple of minutes right beforehand. Now when I told people I was making pastry dough for the first time, they were like, oh you used a dough cutter, right? And I'm like, no, I used a fork and it took a super long time. So now I know and can tell you all that there are tools to make this easier, just not shown here. So since this will take a while, on this show, I talk a lot about why focusing so much on food matters. Food may seem like a somewhat superficial way to peek into one's culture. For example, you can't just eat pad thai and then automatically be appreciative and understanding of all Thai culture. But as you've seen in other episodes so far, it is true that if you listen to the stories behind these dishes, you pick up pockets here and there. And speaking of pockets, once the butter is cut into the flour, add six tablespoons of ice cold water, one tablespoon at a time, and combine until you have a smooth ball of dough. It might seem like one tablespoon of water isn't really making a huge difference, but just keep combining, making sure to keep the dough cold and eventually it'll happen. So the focus of this episode is empanadas, which are in so many cuisines throughout the world. And understandably, they're found in places that have been colonized by Spain. You've got Chilean empanadas filled with beef and onion, hard boiled egg. You've got the bright yellow turmeric spiced Jamaican patties filled with curried beef. And even dulce de carne in Italy is a result of the Spanish rule in Sicily. And as we've talked about in previous episodes, the Philippines was colonized by Spain for over 300 years. So today I want to add some more complexity here to the simple idea that because of colonization, we have empanadas. But first, we've now got dough, which I will wrap and put into the fridge while I prepare the filling. And this has me thinking that I should have just bought frozen pre-made pastry, but like I have to seem a little bit legit in this video. Next, over medium heat, we will saute a cup of chopped onion in a tablespoon of oil for about three to four minutes, and then add one cup of tiny little potato cubes. And here, I add a quarter cup of water and cover this for nine to 10 minutes or until it's all tender. Pushing the onion and potato to the side, we're going to add half a pound of ground beef and cook it through. Season with salt and pepper before adding one cup of cubed carrots and another quarter cup of water, cooking until the carrots are tender. In the last minute of cooking the filling, we're gonna add one tablespoon of soy sauce and one tablespoon of tomato paste and combine this. I'm gonna add one cup of frozen peas and then what is apparently a really contentious ingredient, a handful of raisins. Cook this for really just one minute and then you need to drain the mixture and cool it completely. We're going to take half of our dough and put the rest in the fridge while we roll this out as thin as we can. Now I'm resourceful and have located this top of a cocktail shaker but you can use any other round object to template your empanadas. With this first pass, I'm able to do 11 brilliant little circles and we can actually start filling them. I give them a little roll of the pin and with scientific precision, apply one spoonful of filling to the dough and carefully pinch the sides together. And then I pinch and fold these edges together and I only will show 11 empanadas here. 
but for all of the following, you're going to have to do this until you've used up all of your dough and all of your filling. Okay, so while you watch in amazement as I do this, I have to talk about the late Doreen Fernandez, who is a celebrated food critic and historian who wrote about Filipino food and culture for over 40 years. Doreen's work is among the efforts of Filipino historians who have been trying to articulate how difficult it can be to answer the question, what is Filipino food? If you're Filipinex and watching, think about how you would answer this question. Would you say that it's a mix of things from different countries? Would you describe the presence of sweetness, bitterness, and sourness flavor profiles? I think something that makes it hard for me to answer this is how in my head, I find that I conflate Spanish influence and colonization with my Filipinx identity. And maybe you do that too. I don't know, it's really easy to do. People speaking Tagalog use many Spanish words. Over 90% of people in the Philippines identify as Roman Catholic. We all love chicharron. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that there are a lot of things that manifest now because of Spanish colonization. But obviously, all of the countries that were colonized by Spain are not a monolith. And to bring it back to why I'm talking about empanadas today, how do Filipino empanadas become Filipino empanadas? Here's a quote from her article, Culture Ingested, which is linked in the description. The process seems to start with a foreign dish in its original form brought in by foreigners, Chinese traders, Spanish missionaries. It is then taught to a native cook who naturally adapts it to the tastes he knows and the ingredients he can get, thus both borrowing and adapting. Eventually, he improvises on it, thus creating a new dish that in time becomes so entrenched in the native cuisine and lifestyle that its origins are practically forgotten. That is indigenization. And in the Philippines, the process starts with a foreign element and ends with a dish that can truly be called part of Philippine cuisine. This is so important, right? There is not just a transfer of cuisine, but an evolution. An evolution that is inclusive of and in recognition of regional palates, local ingredients, and the skill and technique of our people. Understanding the process of indigenization is about so much more than the food. It's about a society, a people, and the land at snapshots in time. You might notice that this particular empanada recipe is pretty sweet. There's lots of sugar in the pastry which you see a lot in savory Filipino dishes, the sweet and salty profiles juxtaposed together. There are also raisins, and the presence of dried fruit here is probably due to Arab influence in Spain. And the use of raisins specifically is interesting knowing that the US exported a lot of California raisins to the Philippines and broadly the Asian market in the 1910s. And this is just one regional variation of the empanada. If you look up the Ilocos empanadas, they have a completely different filling. And that just shows how people used what was regionally available and why empanadas are so evolved and varied within even just the Philippines. I think that Doreen's framework for indigenization helps you appreciate the process of a Filipino empanada becoming Filipino. Before these go into the oven, I'm going to brush them with an egg wash which is just one egg and one tablespoon of water beaten together. And I will sprinkle each one with kosher salt. These go into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes or until golden brown. And I won't show it here, but you should be able to make two to three dozen. I find Filipino empanadas really yummy because they have that touch of sweetness that makes them different from other countries' empanadas that I also really like. But there's so much you can learn from these dishes because everything from their name to the ingredients to when it's typically served will tell you something about our past. Dorian passed away in 2002 in New York City. I'm linking out to her article, Culture Ingested, below. I hope you find it interesting. And if you have any thoughts about empanadas, or if you make empanadas a different way, let me know in the comments below. If you liked what you saw today, like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you can stay plugged in with the upcoming episode next week on The Sago Show. Salamat.